bless you. Amen. Let us stand up right now. And go ahead and open up in prayer. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Father, we thank you for your hand resting upon us this day. For this is the day that thou hast made. And we do rejoice and are made glad in it. Father, I bless your people. I bless those who have traveled today to be with us. I bless those, Father, who are here with us. Oh, Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus that you are touched today supernaturally. Father, set the captives free. For I believe that the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. For he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart, to preach deliverance to the captive and recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty those that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Father, I believe today that your word will be fulfilled in our ears this day, as the scripture has said. Father, I ask that you would visit us today supernaturally. Move in this place, Father, and among your people, we ask you this in Jesus' mighty name. Now, Father, I ask you, Lord, that you would move, move throughout the airwaves. Every man and every woman under the sound of my voice. I pray, Father, that you would touch right now in the name of Jesus. I bind the strong man that is holding your people back. I bind the strong man now in Jesus' name. And I come against the principalities and the powers and the rulers of darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in our places. And I say you, your work is finished in the life of the people of God this day. I serve you notice that your work is finished. And the children of God will now take a stand, a bold stand, and rise up to meet the challenge and to walk in the strength of who they are in you, Lord. I bless your people now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Glory to God. Well, welcome to a new life in Christ Jesus Church, where Jesus Christ is glorified. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. You know, we serve a good God. The God that we serve, he's alive. He's well. And my God, he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. You know, we've been dealing with this area on Sunday morning, on Wednesday nights, I mean, tearing down the stronghold. And we believe that, glory to God, that we're going to be able to continue to minister to you along that line today. Amen. Amen. I would just, just want y'all to just keep your hearts and minds just open up to the things of God. And don't let the enemy, uh, don't let no distractions stop you from hearing what God is going to say to you. Open your hearts, open your minds, and know that you are in the presence of God and that he is among you. Hallelujah. Amen. Because, see, we are in, we're not in this thing alone. He's with us. His rod and his staff, they comfort us. He prepared the table before us in the presence of our enemies. Hallelujah. So as we look to him with confidence, we can rest assured that the God that we serve, the God that we have put our trust in, he's not only able to deliver us, but he will deliver us. Hallelujah. Regardless of what we're going through, we just keep our confidence and our trust in him. Regardless of what it looks like, folks, we are on the winning team. We are not on the losing team. We're on the winning team. Amen. Now, we've been talking about pulling down the strongholds by faith on wins tonight and right now I just want you to understand something that tonight can be your miracle night tonight can be the night that you be set free you that are listening by the internet and you that are viewing us by the internet tonight can be the night that you can be set free if you just take your eyes off your situation you just take your eyes off the circumstances and let your mind just be quiet for a little while and let the spirit of God take a bold stand within you hallelujah Today can be your miracle day. I believe that with all my heart. I believe that because I know that God, he is among us. He is among us today. Amen. First of all, 
I want you to turn your attention to the book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians. Amen. In the book of Ephesians, I want you to look with me here. And glory to God. In the book of Ephesians chapter, uh, let's just say chapter 2. Book of Ephesians chapter 2. Okay. Now, in the book of Ephesians, I'm going, I want to establish you in your proper seating arrangements. Because, see, before you can go in to take a strong man out, you got to know your strength. Amen. And then you have to study the strength of your enemy. You have to know what, 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 you, what, you, what, what are you coming against. Are you able to stand up against it? Or are you going to yield to and be defeated? Amen. You need to see where you are so that you can so you can kind of picture where you're going. Amen. So in the book of Ephesians, in chapter 2, I want you to look at verse number 1. And it says, And you had he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. See, that was the that, that was the stronghold that was established in your heart. Amen. Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now working in the children of disobedience, among whom also now whom also we all had our conversation in time past, fulfilling the lusts of the flesh, the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as others. Verse number four. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sin, and I like this part, had quickened us together with Christ. In other words, had made us alive together with Christ. Amen. And then in verse number six, it says, and now, this is, now this is very important because, see, this is how you're going to determine in your heart whether or not you're going to be able to stand against your enemy. Amen. Or are you going to be able to, uh, are you going to give in to your enemy? Because, see, a person that don't know who he is, I don't know where he's, where his, uh, where his position is, uh, is from, where he's, where he take, where his position of authority is coming from. He will never be able to take a bold stand against the powers of darkness. We have to, we have to understand that the kingdom of God is in us, amen. And how do we know that? Because look what it says right here. In verse number eight, it's a verse number seven. It says, "And had raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places." Now notice what it said in Christ Jesus. So we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, notice when Jesus uh, uh, finished his work, he was received back into heaven. Amen. He was not only received back into heaven, but he was seated where? At the right hand of the Father. He was seated at the right hand of the Father. What does the right hand mean? The place of authority, the place of power. The position of authority and power. Amen. Now, say that this is the altar. Amen. And now God is sitting right here on this altar. And Jesus, just say now that, uh, that uh, Jesus had, had them finish his work. And now he's been received back into heaven. Now he's seated at the right hand of the Father, which is at his right hand. Amen. Now, this is the, th this is the supreme authority. Now, that authority and power has been delegated now to the one that is seated at his right hand. You understand what I'm saying? Now if you understand if you understand if you understand uh, uh, authority and power, it, it, it's delegated. It's passed down. Now God delegated the authority to Jesus which, which God is on a, th on a throne and Jesus is now seated at the right hand of the Father at his throne. Now we are caught up together and then seated together in heavenly places where? In Christ Jesus. Now notice. Notice now. The authority that God had, he did, dedicated it to Jesus. Now the authority and the power that Jesus has has been what? Dedicated now to you. Because you are seated at his right hand in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You are in his place. You, you, are in the, you are now in the position of authority. Everything that God has created in this earth, God has given you dominion over. And when the, men, when the enemy begin to begin to establish, trying to establish strongholds in you, that means that you have you have 
uh, if, either forgotten your position or never knew your position. Or you have did something wrong and didn't repent of it. Amen. So something has taken place in order to get you off of your position. So God wants us to see and understand that we have been seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now notice what it goes on to say. Notice what it goes on to say in verse number in verse number uh, 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 verse number uh, uh, seven. And in the and in the age to come, he make that he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in the kindness wherein toward us through Christ Jesus. Now I'd like to take you to another place. I want to show you something that's very, very important. Very important to you as a believer. Amen. Because see, when we begin to understand what's going on right here, see, we begin to see what God what God delivered from. Look at chapter one. Back over now to chapter one and look at verse number verse number uh, uh, uh verse number sixteen. Ephesians chapter one and verse number sixteen. Amen. Now notice what it says, and cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord and Savior, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you wisdom, the spirit of wisdom, and revelation in the knowledge of him. Amen. When you begin to receive uh, uh, the spirit of wisdom and revelation, that means you begin to understand truth. That means truth is being revealed, and when truth is being revealed, that truth is able to do what? To make you free. Amen. That truth is able to make you free. So God is wanting to do something very significant in our hearts today. God is wanting to make us free from the kingdom of darkness. He has already given us the power over all the powers of the enemy. Now it's time for us to begin to walk in that freedom. It's time for us to begin to walk in that deliverance that he's already provided for us. Now how is that going to happen? We got to learn now that we see our position. Now we need to begin to... Now, what is the definition of a strong a, a stronghold? The definition of a strong is is a is a uh, 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 a fortress or uh, or uh, a fortress that's been uh, how did I say it? My God, I let me see the definition of a strong. I, I thought I, I said like it's a it's a, 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 a defense city. It's a is a it, that's been fortified around the sides and beneath. Amen. It's been established to be strong. And the only way you're going to overcome something like that, see, how do the enemy establish strongholds in us? By making us appear weaker than him, which we are not. But he appears to try to make us weaker than him by doing what? Trying to establish strongholds in our mind by giving, making us to constantly think on something that is, that is contrary to the will of God. Amen. To to make us vulnerable, to make us think that we can never overcome the 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 the, 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 the tactics that He set out before us. See, God has given us every strategy we need to overcome our enemy, but you see, we don't understand that, and because we don't understand it, we allow ourselves to be defeated. Amen. In a lot of areas, Satan no longer has the power over us. He don't have no power over us. Only power he have over us is what we allow him to. Amen. He only has the power that we allow him to. Because, see, we are seated where? In heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, notice what it goes on and said. Look what it, uh, verse number, uh, uh, back over to where we were reading chapter 1. Now, look at verse number 21. Verse number 21. Now, let's just start verse number 20. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in the, in the heavenly places. Now, notice what it said. Far above. You see what I'm saying? Far above. Hallelujah. So that showed me that I'm seated with Christ far above. Hallelujah. Principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, hallelujah, but also in that which is to come. See, God has instilled within us his ability but yet still we try to do everything that we can do in our ability God has given us his wisdom because his God's ways is higher than man's ways his thoughts is greater than man's thoughts amen so when we are yielding to our way we're we're we're, we're negating to what God has already done for us everything that Christ had prepared for us to walk in it's already been made 
available for us. But it comes by the revelation of his word being revealed to your heart and truth. Begin to open up your eyes. In other words, illuminate your heart. That, that illumination is what's going to make you free. Because once the light comes on, darkness flees. Mm. <laughs> I can turn these lights out in here right now. It'll get dark in here. Amen. Darkness invades this place when the light is not on. But once the light is turned on, darkness flees. Why? Because it cannot stand the light. And that's what God wants us to see and know and understand. The darkness cannot stand when the, when the illumination begins to take place in your, in your inward being. Hallelujah. He can't stay. He has to go. Why? Because you become, you're coming into truth. Truth. The Bible said in John 8, 31, 32, If you, my disciples, indeed, you shall continue in my word, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen? So when we, come to, when we, be, when we, when we begin to receive revelation knowledge, that knowledge has the ability to make you free. Amen? It has the ability to make you free. Now notice what it, now notice what it, again, notice what it says here again in verse number 21. He has, he has, he, now see, we, we, we are seated in heaven place in Christ Jesus far above all, not, not some, not, not just a few, but we've been seated above all principalities, all principalities and power and might and dominion. Amen. So nothing that the devil can throw at you can overtake you unless you allow it to. If you choose to, 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 to allow his thoughts to be entertained in your heart and in your mind, then you are allowing yourself, you are allowing a stronghold to be established in your heart. Amen? In your mind. It's going to start first in your mind because your mind is the battleground. Your mind is the battleground. and It, is, it will be determined right there whether you're going to win your battle or you're going to lose your battle. It starts right there in your mind. Oh, hallelujah. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen out there. <laughs> hallelujah. Amen. So God is, call, God is calling us, to, God is calling us to, to prepare ourselves for war. Amen. To prepare ourselves for war. Now, what, now, now, now notice what he says right here. Amen. In first, uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Amen. And let's look at verse number 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number uh, verse number 5. See, cause the enemy wants you to, he, he wants to, he wants to take control of your mind. Amen. But see, the only way you're going to stop that stronghold from being established is to recognize that whatever that you're thinking on, is it from God? Or is it from the, is it coming from within or is it coming from without? I put it that way. Or is it coming from God or is it coming from the enemy? If it's coming from within, then it's not coming from the outside. That means it's not coming from the enemy. But if it's coming from the outside, it's coming, from, coming in from the enemy. enemy. You know, when the devil talks, it's just like a rough voice. A rough voice. But when God is talking, it's that still, small voice that's coming from, up, from the inside. Amen? When that, in, when that devil talks, it's, it's just like a rough voice coming from the outside. Just like, a, just like trying to push and try to... Brought to, brought, try to bring you into, into a spirit of anxiety, trying to push his way, trying to force his way. God, on the other hand, he speaks with a still small voice from the inside, and he, uh, je he just, he just le allow you to make your own choice. He allows you to make your own choice. Amen? And so, so, a, a, so uh, a stronghold, it can be described as a fortified city. A fortified city. Amen. In other words, in other words, you you have a, you, you, your your fort is just as strong as your as your your fort is just as strong as you are. As you are able to maintain it. If you become weak, then your fortress become weak, because see, it can only stand to the point that you are able to fortify the walls. How do you fortify the walls? How many troops do you have? that you can put up on that wall when the enemy comes that can maintain the, 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 the boundaries. Amen? 
We have an enemy that's coming after us. We have an enemy that is working against us. Now we can take a bold stand, and we can stand on the promise of God's word. We can stand on the truth of God's word, and we can maintain. But if we allow our enemy to get the upper hand, then that means that we didn't we miscalculated his authority and his powers, and we tried to do it in our own strength. Notice what it says right here in verse number five again, Second uh, Corinthians ten five. Is it is it is it casting down what? imaginations. See, imaginations is something that the enemy establishes in your hearts and in your mind to establish a stronghold. So God said to cast down imaginations. And it didn't stop right there. It didn't stop right there. And it said, and, and every high thing that what? Exalted itself. Every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge or you might say the will or the word of God. Anything that's, that, is, that is putting itself above the, the will of God or the word of God, it's just like Luther in, 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 uh, uh, in Isaiah chapter 14. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will be like the most high. I will, I will, I will set my, my throne above the stars of God. Amen. He, that what he was doing. He was putting himself in a position above the creator, the one that created him. God never told us to, he never told us to, to uh, think of ourselves more highly. He said, think, he said, th he said, think of yourself, don't think of yourself more highly than you all think, but he never told us not to think of ourselves highly. That's why God wants you to begin to see yourself as he sees you, because God sees you valuable. If he sees you valuable, that means you are highly thought of. Highly thought of. Hallelujah. Kirk, you are highly thought of. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So it's time you start seeing yourself that way. And when you know, when, notice that casting down imagination, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought. Amen. Bringing into captivity every thought. Casting down everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience to Christ. Amen. And how are we going to do that? Look what it says in verse number three. For the weapons of our war, verse number four means, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So we can do it by using not conventional weapons, but our spiritual weapons. That's how we're going to bring it into subjection to the will of God. By standing and using our spiritual weapons. Hallelujah. Am I making any sense to y'all today? Amen. Amen. God is calling us to, he called us to, to arm ourselves with, as a heavily armed soldier. Amen. So he says right in verse number four, he said, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the, through the pulling down of strongholds. God wants to give you the ability to pull down the strongholds that are trying to establish itself in your heart and in your mind. How is he going to do that? By you learning to take thoughts of your imagination and every word that the enemy is trying to bring into your mind. You know if it's God, you know when it's not God. We're not dumb. We know when God is speaking. We know when the enemy is speaking. Amen. We got to learn to cast down those thoughts that the enemy is speaking. Instead of saying, oh, I like that idea. Hmm. You know, you ever been like that? You know, you know it wasn't God giving you this idea. It wasn't God talking to you. But yet still, it looked so good and it sounds so sweet. Make your little heart want to skip a beat. You know? <laughs> That was a song one time, wasn't it? <laughs> Amen. But the thing that I want you to understand is this, that God wants you to be a fortified city. He wants you to be a fortified city. He wants you to, to, to study your enemy, to study your enemy, to see the strength that he has. Because if you don't understand the strength of your enemy, you will never be able to conquer him. Because if you don't study him, if you don't understand what you're dealing with, then you will never know what you're going to run up against when you go up against him. You've got to understand that. Because the enemy, he's, he's very, he's very uh, uh, how they say it, children say, sneaky. <laughs> very sneaky. Amen. But anyway, look at 
now let's go back to the book of Ephesians again, please. In the book of Ephesians, I want you to look with me at chapter 6 now. Amen. Chapter 6. And it says right here in verse number 10, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. You see, your strongholds, the, the strongholds, see, God, God, God is giving us, God is establishing a stronghold too. But see, the stronghold that God is establishing you is the stronghold for you to stand on his word. For you to not just depend on your own abilities. For you not depend on your own strength. God said, and right here in verse number, verse number 10, he said, Find my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. See, now he's given us, he's given us the means whereby we will be able to defeat our enemy. Because, see, he's given us, he's given us the tools that we need. He's given, us the, he's given us the tools that we need, and he's showing us how to apply them. Notice what, notice what he said right here in verse number 11. Put on. He said, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand against the evil, that you may be able to stand against the evil, against the wiles of the evil, of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual weakness in high places. Amen. So God has given us the ability to stand up against these things, but how are we going to stand up against them? Amen. Now, let's go now to the book of Matthew. Oh, my God, chapter 10. Lord, am I right? Is that where you're taking me? Amen. Let's try. Let's look and see. I believe I'm right because the Lord just put that in my spirit. Amen. He just put that in my spirit. Glory to God. See, if we're going to set people free, we got to move into power. we got to operate in power. Amen. We got to operate in power. Look at verse number one. Yep, I'm in the right place. Verse number one. And it says, And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them what? Power. Now he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases among the people. Amen. So God, he's showing us, he's given us the power to stand up against the principalities, against the powers, and against the rules of darkness of this world. Amen? How are we going to do it? We're going to do it by faith. We're going to stand in faith. Glory to God. We're going to stand in faith. Hallelujah. Now, now, now notice what he said in verse number 8. He said, heal the sick, can't cleanse the leper, raise the dead, and cast out devils. See, this is what Jesus came for. See, the strongholds was established in the, in the lives of the people. Jesus came and destroyed every stronghold that came his way. Amen? Y'all understand what I'm saying? Look at, uh, uh, oh, my God. Can we turn to another? I'm going to show you something. Look at John chapter 6 and verse 28. Verse 28. John 6 and 28. Hallelujah. John 6 and 28. And it says, and it says, then the disciples, then said they unto him, talking about the disciples, then said they unto him, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered, verse 29, Jesus answered and said unto them, this is the work of God that ye believe on him whom he has sent. See, we got to believe the scripture. We got to believe the word of God. If we're going to walk in the truth, if we're going to walk in God's abilities, then we got to believe that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. Amen? To destroy the works of the devil. That's, that's why he came. That was his purpose. And we have been given a great privilege of walking in this same ability. In his ability. In his power. In his authority. Amen? God. Now I, I love that. I love that. Because see, I know that through him, I can do all things. Through him, I can do all things. Amen. No, and it doesn't matter what it looks like from the outside. But the only thing that matters is what God has already said. Because, beloved, listen, God has given us the ability. Now let's go back to the book of, let's go back to the book of, uh, let's see, Luke chapter 10 now. Luke chapter 10. Amen. Let's go to Luke chapter 10. Hallelujah. In the book of Luke chapter 10. 
God has given you authority. God has given you power. So you need to start understanding it and begin to exercise that authority and power. First, let's look at chapter 9, since you're already in that direction. Let's look at chapter 9 and look at verse number 1. Because this is very, very powerful right here. Chapter 9 and verse number 1. Now, notice what it says right here. Then he called his 12 disciples, now notice what it said, together, and gave them power and authority. He gave them power and authority. Amen. And authority over all devils. Over all devils. How many devils left out of all? None. He gave us power over all devils. Hallelujah. And to cure diseases. Amen. Over all devils and to cure diseases. Amen. And then he sent them to preach the kingdom of God. See, the, 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 the deliverance is in the preaching of the kingdom of God. It's not in the preaching of uh, 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 Reader's Digest. But it's in the preaching of the kingdom of God. See, we don't understand how much, how close we are to the kingdom of God. And, and what you really don't, you see, what you really need to know that the kingdom of God is in you. That's how close we are to it. We're so close that it's in us. The kingdom of God is in us. When did it come? How do you know it's in there? When you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the kingdom of God came in you. Glory to God. And once you begin to understand that and you begin to, you begin to, to, to you just do a research on that. And you'll find out before you get through your research, you'll be kingdom minded. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you. You won't see yourself living. You won't see yourself defeated no more. You'll start looking at yourself. My God, is the kingdom of God in me? That means I'm a king. I'm a priest. Amen. First, well, the, uh, 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 <clears throat> First Peter 2 and 9 said, You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. See, if you understand that, then there's no room for no strongholds to be established in your heart and in your mind. There's no reason, there's no way that the devil can, can, can take control over you if you understand that the kingdom of God was on the inside of you. Amen? Everything that God intended for you to have is already on the inside of you. The only thing, the only difference is that some people learn how to, how to tap into them resources. Some people learn how to tap into those resources, and there are others running around putting their mouth on the ones that learn how to tap into it. Amen? Some learn how to tap into it, and others are mad because they don't, they can't, they don't, they don't see it that way. God wants us all to see it that way because the kingdom of God is in us. All the provision that God has created for us to enjoy in this life is on the inside of us. We just got to learn how to reach in there and tap into it. See, that's a strong man that has that, that been working on our, our, on our mind and on our heart trying to make us think that we are supposed to walk around parvished. That's a, that's a stronghold. Amen. God never created you to be poor. He created you to be rich. He created you to be healthy. He created you to be a, a, a priest and a king in his royal priesthood because you are royalty. But the enemy wants you to think that you are not. Hallelujah. So, so when we when we look when we talk about when we talk about uh, tearing down stronghold, we're looking at we need we need to prepare our heart that God can do can, that God may continue to do the thing that He started in us from the from the beginning of our salvation. At the beginning of our salvation, we was I mean we were so on fire. We was we everything that everything that we read. I mean we never. We, couldn't, we didn't want to put the Bible down for nothing. We wanted to just read the Bible all night long. Sometimes we just set up until 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning just reading the Bible. Oh, honey, are you ready to come back? No, honey, I'm, I'm so excited. I'm reading this Bible, and it's, it's, it's speaking to me. Amen? It really speaking to me. But then, did it always speak to you? No, not like it does now. What didn't happen? I got born again. I got born again. I got saved. Now the word of God, is, the word of God has come alive to me. I understand it now when I didn't understand it before. And the strongholds that was established upon my, upon my mind that was blocking me from understanding what the word of God is saying, those strongholds have been demolished by the word, the authority of the word of God. Now the, I can understand. See, when the light comes on, 
the strongholds are broken and darkness flees. Darkness flees. Hallelujah. Amen. And so when we, see, we have to understand it because, see, God has given us authority. God has given us power over all the powers of the enemy. Look at Luke chapter 10 now, verse number 1. Luke chapter 10. Glory to God. Verse number 1. It says, after these things, the Lord appointed other seventy also and sent them two and two in, in every place and city, in every city and place where he himself would come. See, the work, the work started getting good because people started getting delivered. People started getting free. Now, everybody's hearing about the strongholds are being broken and people being set free. They all coming for help now. They all coming for help. Now, Jesus had to, anoint, had to, had to call seventy more and appoint them to go and start ministering the word of God now. Why? Because it was too the workload was too was too big for just the twelve now. The first initial twelve, they done gone out, they done began to establish the word of God, strongholds being demolished, and people being set free. Now the word is spreading so so fast and so wide that everybody's coming to be free. And they bring their children, they bring their loved ones, their husbands, their wives, and everyone that was that was a, that was a de demonically oppressed or whatever. Amen. But notice what it says here in verse number two. Therefore said he unto them, the harvest truly is great, but the labors are few. How many know we got to we got to prepare our hearts? If we're not free, then how can we reap the harvest? If we're not free, then how can we set the people free from the strongholds that is holding them captive? We got to be free. We got to be free. Amen. So that's his. That's, so he's showing us right here. Let's just read verse number one all the way through now. After these things, the Lord appointed other seventy also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place wherever he himself would come. Verse number two said, Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I sent you forth as lamb among wolves, carry neither purse nor strip, nor shoes, and salute no man by the way. And into whatsoever house ye enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if the Son of Peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall return to you again. And in the same house remain, eating, such, eating and drinking such things as they give you. For the labor is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house, and into whatsoever city ye enter, they receive you, they, re, they receive you, eat such things that are, that are set before you, and notice what it says, verse 9, and heal the sick. What is that doing? Demolishing strongholds. That's setting the captives free. This is what God has called us to do. We are not called just to sit in a church and get a lot of information. It's God called us to get this information, to put application with this information, to use it and to bring the people to a place of deliverance and freedom. If we can't do it, then that means we don't have the revelation knowledge of it. We don't, we don't, have, we don't have illumination in our heart concerning it. How do we get illumination? We hear what God is saying. We go get the word of God. We get to meditate upon that word, and we allow that word to, to come alive in our spirit. How did that happen? By meditating. By meditating. Reading it over and over, and then and then just go ahead on, go about your business, do what you're doing. But every when, but when the Lord brings it back up to you now, see, when the Lord brings it back up into your spirit, after you have read and meditated upon it, and you just forgot all about it, you went back to your daily choice. Then later on, the Lord by the Spirit bring the word back up in your heart. Now all of a sudden, you go back and read it. Now God is going to start speaking to you concerning what you're reading. What's happening? He's starting to feed you revelation knowledge concerning the word. Amen. What is that revelation knowledge going to do? It's going to, it's going to deliver you from strongholds that have been established over your mind. It's going to deliver you, and it's going to begin to set you free. You see, how can we set someone else free when we still, see, I like what the scripture said. Let's just use the scripture example instead of, instead of a man's example. The, the word example gives us this way. How can you take the moat out of someone else's eye when there's a beam in your own? You understand? So God wants to take the, the beam out of our own eye. Then we can see clearly to take the moat out of someone else's eye. Because we, if we're in bondage, then how can we set someone else free? 
This is the whole purpose that Jesus Christ came. He came to destroy the stronghold that was, uh, that was, that was against us, that was hindering us from coming to the Father. We could not come to the Father without Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. And so he says right here, he tells us how, and then we look at verse number 19, it says, Behold, I give unto you power. Behold, I give unto you power to shred on serpents and scorpions. And now notice what he said, over all the powers of the enemy. See, God has given you all the power that you need to make a firm stand on his word. But you can't do it in your own strength. You've got to do it in his strength. That's why he said, find him, my brother. Be strong in the Lord, Ephesians 6.10. Be strong in the Lord. He never told us to be strong in ourselves. He always, he always focused our attention toward him, never to ourselves. When we look into ourselves, that means we we'll begin to act with pride. But as we look into him, as we look into him, we will look to the hill for which cometh our help, for all of our help cometh from the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm, that makes me want to dance up here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Our help coming from the Lord. Amen. It's not from ourselves, but it's coming from the Lord. Amen. So God wants to increase your faith so you can begin to stand on the word. Amen. He wants to increase your faith so you can be able to stand on the word. How do we know God wants to increase your faith? Because the disciples ask him, Lord, increase our faith. Why? Because they... Let's just turn to, Matt, turn to Luke chapter 17. Since we're already in Luke, just two, two, three pages over. Amen. Luke chapter 17. And now notice what it says right here. Let's look at verse number three. Oh, hallelujah. Verse number three. Take heed to yourself if, 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 if thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt what? Forgive him. Amen. See, you cannot cause a stronghold to be established as long as you, you don't have control over that area. But every time he come and repent, that enemy, that stronghold that the enemy tried to establish in his mind, it was broken. It was broken. Every time he came and repent, the stronghold was broken. Why? Because he saw his wrong and he, he acknowledged his wrong. And if he had did it seven times a day or 24 times a day, if he acknowledged it 24 times a day, guess what? The stronghold could be blocked 24 times a day. It won't be established. But when we do it and don't repent, the stronghold begin to be established in our hearts. That's when our heart become hardened to the truth. That's when we refuse. That's when we begin to think that we begin to think more highly than we ought to think. Well, look at Joe Blow preacher over there. But well, I'm just as good a preacher he is. You may be, but because you have a hardness of your heart, he's outdoing you. Why? Because his heart is open before God. And yours is closed. Because you've allowed a stronghold to stop you from advancing the kingdom of God. It don't have to be a preacher. It can be anyone. Any man, any woman. If you allow a stronghold to be established in your heart, you cease to advance the kingdom of God. That means that you, are, you are right at the verge of backsliding. Because a stronghold is trying to establish itself in your life. And you got to you got to break free from that. You got to break free from it. And the only way you're going to break free from it is, 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 is for you to recognize your error, repent from it, and turn away from it. That's why this man said seven times. He said, no, 70 times seven. That's right. That's right. 